All right, it's recording. Okay. What? Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jade, and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today, we are talking about how Emma Chamberlain got famous, exposing her true roots, core, her secrets, her tactics. Yeah, um, this video is gonna be for you if you are a YouTuber yourself wanting to know how Emma did it, or maybe you're just curious as a follower of hers just to know like what the fuck's going on. Um, but this video is not for you if you're just gonna comment, you edit like Emma Chamberlain because just stop! The reason why I'm making this video is actually because I have a lot of people comment below like I edit like Emma Chamberlain, I'm copying her. I guess we are all copying her at this point and maybe you've been called out before by her fans. Now, I don't really give a shit. If you're new to this channel, maybe you're confused about who I am and what I do and why I'm talking about this shit. But basically, I help people grow on social media. I'm a digital marketer. And a lot of people ask me for marketing tips based on Emma's success. Like, a lot of you guys are YouTubers and you're struggling with growing your channel, but then you see this, you know, 17, is she 17 at this point? How old is Emma Chamberlain? She's literally 17 years old. Like, how did she, go from zero to three million. That's what we're gonna answer today, exposing just everything. I literally started to research the shit out of this because it was so hard to understand. If you've been living underneath a rock, Emma's basically a YouTuber that makes comedy videos. I don't even know how to describe it. You guys might have to tell me what you think about her content. I'm not gonna stall any longer. We're gonna hop right into the video. So stay to the very end of this video if you wanna see me expose the shit out of this girl um, and just reveal everything in a marketing sense, okay? This is not a diss track. Diss track? What am I even talking about? Okay, let's get started. Bye, guys. If you're curious, I'm really traveling for a business trip. I'm in my hotel. As I was going to my hotel, I literally couldn't find the hotel key. And I was like scrambling everywhere. Have you ever like just dumped all your shit on the ground trying to find that one thing and you still don't find it? For 30 minutes, I was scrambling around for my hotel key in my fucking doorway. My door finally opened. Um, and this analogy kind of got me thinking. Emma Chamberlain doesn't make sense. Like her growth doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that she's not using SEO. Um, she's not using keywords. Her thumbnails aren't like optimized. You know, it's just her and her content but it works um similar to my situation of trying to find my hotel key a lot of you guys are trying to find a key to success but you only can use the one that fits your goals so i'm gonna use a similar analogy emma honestly just found the right key like yes she worked really hard on her content yes she had all this stuff but it was just the right timing at the right place for the right person with the right message so i'm just gonna expose her right off the bat i think emma makes self-deprecating content and people love that a lot of you guys just trying to be funny, you're trying to be really engaging. But the truth is, deep down, all of us like watching people make fun of themselves because deep down, we're insecure. This is less of exposing Emma, but just exposing our internal goals and motivation. Like, we like watching other people talk shit about themselves because deep down, we're insecure and all humans have mistakes. So what we enjoy and what we think Emma is so cool about is just she's so open and okay with making content. You know, like talking about your poop problems, talking about how ugly you are. Deep down, that's the core reason why her content works. This doesn't mean you have to be more negative on camera, but being relatable and making self-deprecating content has proven to work really well for Emma. And that's the truth. There's nothing magical about, you know, vlogging. It's just because she talks down herself, deep down as humans, we kind of are attracted to that because the thoughts we think about in our heads when we look in the mirror of how ugly we are or we're not, we're not good enough, which is not true, is something we're attracted to because when we see another person doing that, we look, you feel comfort, and we feel like you have a close relationship. That's why her fan base is actually mildly insane. I am not joking. The comments I get from her fans and followers, but I love you if you're a fan of Emma. I'm a fan of Emma. I think we all are. She's fucking insane, like in a good way. A lot of her fan base are so protected of her. If you edit like Emma Chamberlain, you are screwed for life. I don't know if you guys feel this, but I've been called out so many times. So have my YouTuber friends been too, but every comment's like, if you do this shit. I think that's just a good example of how close her fan base really is just because when you talk down yourself you're really honest you're really truthful people are attracted to that and build trust so the next thing i'm going to talk about is her audience okay like pivoting towards like having the right message she just has a right audience for the message which is high schoolers i'm not trying to summarize you guys but just as a marketer this is the analysis i found okay but like typically high schoolers um they're young they're insecure you know and they cling towards group chats and groups of people. This is not saying this is everyone, this is just the majority of her demographic. Because Emma makes self-deprecating content or content that makes fun of herself, you know, as a high schooler, that's our biggest problem, you know? I drop out of high school to pursue business, but like for the longest time, I didn't like it when people were too perfect. I didn't like seeing other girls 
prettier than me win they all stole my boyfriend like what the fuck jessica so, and that's just all like i'm gonna be very vulnerable too like i liked emma for that reason because i couldn't do that and maybe you guys feel that too like you watch people who just talk down on themselves because deep down it's really annoying to see the perfect perfect high production content all the time on youtube so to be very honest like emma had the right demographic our pain points were really relatable to each other which is why her content blows up relating back to you maybe you're making youtube videos but they're just super surface level you're talking about makeup tutorials maybe you're doing just like cute little tips and tricks but you're not going to the root of the problem that's why you can't relate to your audience and that's why maybe you're not building that connection so just exposing emma um this is not really to like look down on her it's just the truth that she's really good at finding your pain point which is hey we're all insecure about high school but she goes to my next thing which is her editing emma did not invent ken burns nor did she invent the fucking like <laughs> zoom ins and you know face blurbs like this or like this this is what i think maybe this is a conspiracy theory but to be honest it's just like a smart marketing strategy we love a marketing queen so basically this is what i think happened like to be honest i had to think about this really hard i don't know why emma blew up we don't know because it doesn't make sense and it happened so rapidly so my only assumption correct me if i'm wrong but i honestly think emma picked a demographic or you know a demographic stumbled upon her which is like a high school student younger insecure you know really found her message relatable got super attached you know built so much trust with that fan base to the point where now you know emma's followers are attacking other people for copying her style of editing and if you think about it like that's so smart because if someone's commenting you edit like emma chamberlain on another piece of content and the person that looks at the comment doesn't know emma then googles emma then be like oh shit basically like her army is spreading her own message and content it's not the best way to do it neither do i think people should start saying so you're copying someone else because at the end of the day no one copies each other no one's original it's like saying you're original when you're born like who the fuck is born and like goes out of the womb and says like yep i'm original piece of content like no like you copy your mom and dad first we all learn from someone but we just take different pieces of inspiration from different people and multiple sources it doesn't mean we're copying one person but to be very honest it worked for emma because her fan base is so damn loyal or maybe annoying depending where you look it. but that really spread her message because now people are looking at other people's content from emma's point of view she is original and she's always top of the mind in marketing and what i do for my clients basically how do you become top of the mind in your industry and it all starts with having that fan base and people spreading your message but that was kind of just me rambling around what i really think happened so yeah for everyone who commented that i also edit like emma that's okay and to be very honest there's nothing wrong with editing with high retention if there's truth editing like fucking like this and adding Ken Burr helps with watch time. All YouTubers are doing it, not because it's Emma, but because it works. There's something truth about having engaging content and doing fast jump cuts. The last thing I wanna say, closing off this video to give you guys value, is if you're someone who's also trying to make it on this social media platform, you're trying to be an influencer, and also build an awesome fan base like Emma, um, my biggest tip for you, that it's there's something refreshing about being the first one. Emma just had the right timing. And if you're a YouTuber, listen to me, like you could be doing everything right on your channel. You're making good content, you have the right distribution, you have the right audience, but if it's not the right timing, you won't be able to grow the brand you want. Um, Emma just stumbled upon a really, really good time, which is this year, which is like the era, I guess, of people who are sick of super high production videos. Like we're, as humans, like we have seen the same shit over and over again, like super high saturated, slow-mo, beach walking montages. We just want something relatable. So Emma was that first person in the industry to take the step forward. When I was doing this YouTube thing, for sure, um, I got, you know, bullied a lot in high school for doing YouTube. Um, and my mistake was I let it get to me. Emma is, she proclaims this confidence and message we're so attractive to because deep down, we're all insecure inside, right? And maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're not, maybe you're actually perfect, who knows? But deep down, we have problems and I didn't realize that you could actually make content out of the problems you had. I thought you had to be perfect and I thought you had to all together and that would make you successful. But the truth is, it's not. It's just having the right message at the right time for the right person. And once I realized that, and once I was analyzing people that gave me inspiration, that's how I grew this channel from, you know, a thousand subscribers to 60,000. Um, and yes, I got a lot of shit for it. Like in the very beginning, it was really hard building this channel. And it was really hard building the businesses I wanted because I had a fear of failure. If you have a fear that you're not good enough, you know, that you fucking suck at making videos, it's not always about the content. It just might be the right time. And you will learn and you'll adapt. And I hope this video gave you some value. Um, if you so far enjoyed it, why don't you just obliterate that like button. Just let me know your thoughts because 
you know, I created this channel to help you grow on social. I know this video might be different and you might not expect marketing tips from a 17 year old, but I'm really passionate helping you take your passion to career. Like I really truly believe that if you want to be like Emma, if you want to grow a fan base and you want to go after your dreams right now is the best time. Like it literally is the market and the industry has been doing so well. And I want to encourage you and implore you to take action and not let your insecurity and fear get to you and rather push forward and overcome. All right guys. So that was my video. I hope you liked it. Um, I'll catch you guys. What is this position? I hope you guys have the best day ever. If you want, make sure you subscribe on the way out. I post videos here a lot. Um, and I'd love to have you stick around if you found any sort of value. I really truly care about you guys. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner on my next video, just comment below your questions, your thoughts. I'll probably look at it, respond. Um, I'm going to go fucking find my hotel room key. I keep losing this shit. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next one. I love you all so, so much, and I'll see you next time. Mwah.